everybody. If you're looking for a nice, quiet video, something to rax to, let me tell you, this is not it. Because today, we're looking at how to program epic percussion and a new library called Damage 2. Okay, first of all, a little bit of context. Damage 1 came out uh, 10 years ago, and ever since then, the company who made it, uh, Heaviosity, have been working away to come up with uh, a worthy successor. They wanted this to be more like Godfather 2, even better than the original, rather than Bambi 2. Hands up all those who think Bambi 2 is a great movie. You're wrong. Now, the clue is very much in the name of the company. Is it called Light and Fluffyosity? No. Is it called Small Kittens Dancing on Cloudsosity? No. It's called Heaviosity. And this is why. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you damage first of all, give you a lightning tour of the interface and um, the sort of categories of sounds fall under. Then we're just going to write something, okay? So there'll be, um, I'll show you how to do epic um, uh, percussion, how to program it, but first we're just going to look at damage, okay? Right, so here's the beast. It's loaded up. The first, if you load Ensemble Designer, which is what most people would load up first of all, what comes up is Armageddon 2, the follow-up to the iconic patch Armageddon from Damage 1. So, let us have a listen to what we hear when we go. Not bad. I'm giving you visual clues as to the scale of the sound. Yep, it's getting bigger. Let's go to the bottom one. This is a quality product. Within three notes, you know what you're, you're getting. Now, it's laid out in an interesting way. It's over three octaves. Then here goes the second octave. So you get lows, middles, and highs all in one patch. That's really good. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some sample library views, some music theory and compositional uh, techniques, and tips and tricks. And if this is your kind of thing, Subscribe, because we do this all the time, and it's free. And if you watch, then you will learn something. Okay, I hope. Right, where were we? This is the sound stage, obviously. And you can see that they're all laid out. You can drag them around to different parts of the sound stage if you want. You can do that, you know, the Hans Zimmer thing of having them in a circle around the main mic and all that kind of thing, if that's your thing. This mixes between the far mics there and the close mics there. So if you, if you bring that forward, what you're doing is turning off the far mics and you get a really tight, close sound. If you do that, it's a balance between the two. And if you do that, you just get the big surround sound. Um, you can, you see down the bottom here, you've got four sections. Source is an interesting one. You can reprogram anything. So if you want down the bottom here, instead of your monster Tycho, uh, you want, I don't know, for some reason, a solo Piatti. Why would you want that? You can make your own kits. You can make your own s sets, effectively. Now I've got to put the real one back. That one? Yeah, that'll do. Yep, that'll do. Right. Um, settings. You've got a lot of... The performance is pre-programmed... Sounds to me like pre-programmed MIDI things, but there is a separate performance patches, which are absolutely sublimely wonderful. We'll come on to that. Master Effects. Punish is a wonderful plugin. I've used it tons. It's a distortion plugin. So look, you get Gently Now, Hurt Me Plenty, or Nightmare, and, and, it, and it adds different amounts of um, distortion to it. I could spend... Uh, you've also got all kinds of clever things like delays and stutters and in the kits. I, there's lots and lots and lots to go into, but I want to just give you a lightning tour. Now, here, I was ready for, the, oh, is this just one patch? No. If you see up here, it's easy to miss. Click on that. Oh my lord. This is where the whole library unfolds. Tycos, ethnic, symbols, gongs, found sounds, hitting things you around the house, uh, damage, transition. It's got lots of transitions and whooshes and reverses and 
it's got all kinds of stuff. So you can make your own. You can um, adjust the drum. It's, you know, what's not to like, frankly. OK, there's also the kit designer, which is designed to look much more like uh, a traditional drum kit uh, or drum machine. Uh, and it'll load up now. Um, so you can use damage like a kind of alternative version of a, um, a kit drum, which is a really interesting approach. Or you can sort of double it up with um, traditional kit drums. So have you loaded yet? And you can see it's laid out in, in um, it's got this, you know, it's got the sort of uh, the, the pad approach. You got mixes, you, you know. You got so you got a different approach to it, uh, but basically, uh, it's it's great. Okay, so you can drop the samples on there just like you were if you were working with battery or one of those things. Right. Okay. I think we've done enough chatting, don't you? Um, so, time to dig in. Programming epic percussion. Um, a number of points I'm going to make about this as we go through. Um, percussion. Epic percussion is no different to any other section of uh, your uh, of the orchestra or the instruments you know you've got you need to look at it like, like as though you've got highs mids and lows and just as um, you would be careful about writing really fast passages for your bases that uh, but you would put much faster passages in say the violas and the high vi um, str strings and just use the lows for accents the same thing sort of applies to epic percussion it's certainly um, it, you, you know, you can play, but it gets very, very muddy very quickly. So I tend to look at my epic percussion in this way. So uh, if I want um, fast, fast, sustained stuff, I'll tend to... I'll, I'll sort of do it up there. Also, point number two, um, epic percussion is an arrangement. You know, you don't just have to come up with one particular kind of... Um, not loop, but one kind of little groove, and they just keep going with it. You want to bring elements in. You want to, uh, you know, add other other elements and things like that. So look, let's uh, dig into it. I've got a little backing track here, so I'm trying to trying to make it sound a little bit different. So that we so we got session guitar, a Les Paul session guitar from Native Instruments. This is Pattern Strings from Ben Osterhaus. This is a sort of reversed boat guitar choppy effect. Now I've got Symphonic AI, which comes from Red Room and um, Sample Logic. Okay, so it's building. This, it's like somebody sneaking about, really, isn't it? When uh, we were in the white heat of doing lots and lots of Marvel stuff, me and my assistant, um, Brad, had a sort of shorthand for things like this. This we'd called action prep, because it's not fully blown poor peril, and it's not kind of nothing. It's sort of, <gasps> what's going to go on next? And so that's where we are. So it clearly needs some form of assistance to make it punch out the bag and come together and be all those exciting things. And... Uh, Hang on, let me just show you what's gone on in this, actually. Let me just run it one more time so that you can uh, get the gist of uh, how this works. Here we go. Now, Symphonic AI, look, I've, I've got loads of wave plugins on this. Look, one knob, which I really like, which just takes the top off it a bit. Um, this is a brand new one for me, GW Tone Center, but it just makes it sound great. So, uh, let's... And then what I've done is I've rolled off the bottom of this because it was very bottomy and it's going to fight with some of the low percussion. And then H delay. You don't know what H delay is? H delay is, everybody uses H delay. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's, I think, possibly the best delay on the market. It's just, it's, well, it, it may or may not be, but it's my go-to and I love it. So, oh, where have I put my sequence? Come back, little sequence. Where have you gone? Right. Guy will now get back his sequence. There it is. Okay. L let me show what this performance thing is because it's really cool. Let's get the backing track going.
it's just not hard to make this sound good. Thank you. Okay, what I often do is I'll start with the bottom and so I, I'll know where I'm going to put in my accents because these bottom notes are going to be accents. Soft. It's too loud. That'll do. All this will be bounced to audio. This is another point. Um, the only difference that you, you you need to think of velocity not as volume so much as texture and tam timbre. Listen. So you're getting much more top end as it gets louder. So we will be layering these drums up um, as we go. So this is the first hit point here. One, two, three, four. And then another one coming up now. And another one just coming up in bar 12 when it's... That was rubbish. Right. Let's go in and sort that out. Now, normally when, it, particularly when it's just a downbeat like that, I'll, I'll quantize it. Um, it, it just saves, uh, I'm gonna leave that one. That was just a bit naff. That wasn't very good. Uh, what am I gonna do with that one? Tell you what, I'm going to get rid of that one. don't like that one, so I'm going to do something else. Um, right, so... Now, what about these Tycho performances? What about... <laughs> okay. That is wonderful. The first one out, we're not going to do it. This second one, we're going to do it. We'll tighten that up. Some in there I like, some in there I don't. Um, that last one I hated. Well, I hate a bit, you know. Hey. Ooh, that's nice. And we have yet to, there's all kinds of transitions and whooshes and reverses and metals and all the rest of it, so we'll get to that. Do not be impatient. So th this bit needs something low that's nice I'll tighten it up again as I say in a minute whoa, whoa, whoa. these two go nicely together so we're layering two layers of bass Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So eighths, quantize to eighths and see what happens. The basses, I don't have any problem quantizing. Some of these top, a bit, top bits I may not quantize because... Okay, ethnic performance. Go in there and see what I can find. 
these look i mean okay ethnic performances you want ethnic performances you got this lot i mean how much more do you want i mean honestly what are you people like uh, sorry no Ooh. Ooh, I like. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm now excited. This is very good for sneaking about. We'll put lots of reverb on. This. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, Let's add the reverb in now so you can hear what I'm talking about. Ethnic performance. Where's ethnic performance gone? Come, my ethnic performance. Okay, so we're going to throw some reverb in here so it's it's got that kind of spacey sort of interesting where am I sort of sound. Um, and we're building a little sort of... Let's see. That's better. A bit loud at the moment, but that's all right. Can take it down. The other thing I'll start doing is start panning things around a bit. Um, I could do this actually inside um, um, Damage 2, couldn't I? I'm liking this a lot. Um, Tiger Performance, let's... Um, okay, let's see how this goes. Oh no, hang on, I want to duplicate it because I'm going to do another line of these Taiko things. Um, I'm just trying to get in here a little bit more interest. So I don't, I'm not just doing whooshes and... I haven't done any whooshes yet either, of course. Um, but um, what am I going to do first? Whooshes or this? So whooshes... <laughs> I prefer whooshes to reverses because you can. when I, I bounce them out, I can always chop the end off. Having said that, maybe on this occasion I will go with a whoosh, or with a reverse. Let's have a look. Hybrid whooshes, uh, transitions, cymbal swell, hybrid reverses. I prefer the hybrid ones to the straight cymbals. It makes these things sound bigger. Now, I personally always bounce reverses. I'd use any or all of those. So I'm just going to play them in. Right, now we render them out. Using my stream deck where I just push a button and these things happen instantly. It's just like having a butler. Um, then uh, we're going to chop it up. Choppy, choppy, choppy. There we go. Okay. Now, let's see what happens when we start lining these up and messing with it. Okay, damage. Well, I'll get into there. The, the reason I like doing it as audio is you can actually really see what's going on. Now, I'm going to just take it off a little bit early there, maybe even earlier. That might sound great or not oh no i haven't got the sunglasses of doubt with me yeah i think it could be shorter than that and quieter just subtly in there there still and shorter still Okay, I'll live with that.
that works, that one doesn't. So when I say works, okay, when I say work, I know some people, they all jump up and say, why does it work? It just, because we've got, we don't need a whoosh into this, into this low thump here, uh, wherever it was, um, because we've got the little ethnic percussion performance thing and it gets in the way. It's just the same as any other piece of arrangement. You know, you want to try and keep things out of the way. That's very nice. Okay. Let's leave like that for the moment and now go back to what I was about to do. So these are perfectly time tempo synced. One, two, three, sixteenths. With the with the mod wheel making them louder and softer. It's too nice. Don't bring them in too soon, guy. Wait, 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 wait. Don't need the second one. Um, you see how this is going? It's just, it's really, really, really good. Nice library. I mean, it because it allows you to do things in a slightly different way. What, what was great about Damage One was it was great, a really well produced utility epic percussion library, which sounded, you know, you got all your, your bottom ends, your middles, your tops, all that, but it had character as well. But the character wasn't so overwhelming that it always sounded like damage. Um, so this has indeed done the same job. Right, let's ramp up a bit because we're, we're faffing here. Now we'll get going from here, I think. Right, let's uh, let's stop being so subtle. Me subtle? What are you talking about? Yeah, well, ish. Um, snare performance. Let's see. You couldn't program that. Okay, I'm going to use something different though. Let's. I'm. I'm. I've, I'm quite enjoying this slightly ethnic vibe, actually. To be honest. Um, frame drums. I have yet to load up the frame drums. Oh, that's quite nice. work. Two, three, four. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so dun, 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 dun. It's all straight eights, isn't it? It sounds like triplets, but it's eights playing in um, threes. How about... A bit more close. I quite like that, actually. Um, 
Let's go for another one. I'm just going for it. I just have as... How long have I been going? Ah! Half an hour. That's the magic witching hour where I turn into a pink hippopotamus ghost thing. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I'm going to have one more layer. How many times have you heard me say, just one more layer? Um... Oh my goodness, go... Oh, no, look at all this stuff I haven't t- touched yet. I'm going to have to keep on using this stuff in... Because... Oh, star presets. Yes. Trailer made. Go on, then. What is trailer made? I know you love trailer made. Oh. That's good. Oh. If you play a sound called Atomic Cloud, what do you expect? I like that. I'm just going to use that. Again, I'm going to... quite something. I'm going to take a deep breath and introduce you to my sponsor. If you want to write better music, better tunes, more interesting chord progressions and fully develop your ideas, then check out my online course, How to Write Music. Six hours of video tutorials, free downloads, a supportive online community and a comprehensive course text. Take your music to the next level with How to Write Music. God, it's so good. I'm going to buy it. Okay, a couple of other... Let me just... Before I go any further, um, I should make a couple of other little observations which you will find useful. One is, um, don't restrict yourself to just playing in from the keyboard. Um, You can use all kinds of other drum editors and things like that to program your drums, and it will sound different. Right, so we're going to record a bit in. Now... um, I only do that so that the uh, uh, drum editor picks up um, the notes which I want to use. I open the drum editor, and there we go, these two here. Now, uh, we're going to have a grid which is going to be in sixteenths, and we can then get our little painty thing. Now, the advantage of doing stuff like this um, is several fold. If you want to program a little riff like this, let's get up, um, where's the, you can draw it. And if you want to put a little quick bit at the end, set the grid for 32s and then add the extra notes as you go to taste. Okay one so there we go so now it's going to go see i mean you know you may or may not like that it's it's all right um but it's uh it's quite useful it is a very it's a different way of programming drums and it can give you some really good uh and different Like that, see? Okay, I, I declare this done. Right, so here is um, whatever we're going to call this. Right, so let's just play, I'm just going to play the thing through and then you can see, you know, what's what. Needs more reverb on that.
easily beef that up a lot more. But I mean, what I'm trying to do here is not doing trailer epic percussion, which is uh, a different beast in many respects. Um, it's this is more uh, what you would use in a film cue, how you'd write it in a film cue, because you, you know you're not going to write something which is going to dislodge teeth, are you? Um, for every cue, otherwise you'd get sacked. <laughs> to put it brutally honestly um but look okay so let's just sum up uh damage is absolutely phenomenally good it's uh probably the, yeah it's definitely the best epic percussion library on the market right now is it the only one you need uh you could easily manage just with damage too that would be absolutely brilliant like all these things within a year you will start hearing it everywhere and if you want and that's why I think of all sections of, uh, you know, the orchestra, percussion is the one you want the most choice with because you can mix and match. You can bring in bits of LA contemporary percussion, strike force, um, uh, apocalypses, um, the sound arms, um, apocalypse stuff, and other heaviosity stuff like uh, master sessions and things, which all kind of come together. To, um, so you can use little elements of different things and bring it together and it kind of starts to sound more of your own. But this does give you an astonishing ability to uh, customize. Uh, so it's really, really good. When it comes to writing epic percussion, uh, less is more. Uh, dynamics is relative. Um, so if everything's super loud all the time, it's not going to sound super loud. It's going to sound uh, just kind of a bit ah. So you want to do these builds and you want to treat it like an arrangement where you bring instruments in, take them out, change things up. Um, I will almost always bounce out uh, to audio because I find it easier to treat and to add effects to. You see, we could have gone into the whole thing. You know, you can use... You can use side chaining and things like that side chain compression just the same with uh, epic percussion as you do with kit drums anything you can do with a kit you can do with epic percussion and including the way you program it in and everything else you can program it in from pads and all the rest of it so but you know to some degree don't throw the kitchen sink at it straight away or, you know although we're talking epic percussion we also you know less is more and it needs to have somewhere to build now this could have got a lot louder to be honest but nonetheless I hope you see you've got an approach. So go out and give this a go. Um, there's so many more things I could say about this, but um, we'll come back and we'll do some more scoring, and I'm definitely going to start using damage, you know, too, all the time. So hope you found this useful. It's gone on a bit longer than usual. Oops, sorry about that. Anyway, um, from me, what do I say now? Oh, goodbye. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye.